Welcome to this Mindback tutorial on configuring the network settings of your LAN time server. This tutorial applies to any Mindback server that uses Mindback's LAN time OS web interface. For the purposes of this video, we'll be assuming that you can already access your time server from a device in your network. But if you need help doing this, please take a look at the video How to assign an IP address linked in the description on how to set up an IP address for your Mindberg time server and how to log in. So once you've successfully logged into your LAN time server, you'll see the main LAN time page with all the server related information. For this video, we are only interested in the network tab, so we click on that. Like so. And this will bring up seven different submenus. The first one we see here is main network information. Opening this submenu will show four fields. The first host name is simply the name under which your device is advertised over your network and the name that can be used to access your time server from another device on the network. If your network is grouped into domains, you can also set a domain. The host name along with any domain name allows you to access the time server using a more easily identifiable and memorable name address rather than an IP address. We can also define up to two DNS servers or name servers here. These are the servers which other devices in your network connect to for information about which IP address links to the host name and domain name. These should be local DNS servers. Moving on to the default gateway. This is the information that the LAN time server needs to access devices outside of its own subnet or network. So if you need your LAN time server to query an external NTP server or send information such as system logs to an offsite device, the connection between your LAN time server and the remote device will be established through this gateway. If the sole function of your LAN time server is as a GPS synchronized NTP server, serving NTP clients in your local network, chances are you won't need to configure this default gateway. However, if your time server needs to communicate with an external NTP server in another subnet with a different address space, or if you need to be able to manage your LAN time server remotely, you will probably need to either set the default gateway or the specific gateway for that interface. Depending on whether your network is using IPv4 or IPv6 addressing, you can set the IP address of the default gateway here. The next submenu network services is essentially your LAN time service firewall settings. This table is the network services matrix and it lets you specify which kind of network traffic are allowed to pass through each virtual interface on your server. For example, in this case, if we wanted to allow only access to the management interfaces through network ports 1 and 2 and to disable incoming NTP traffic, we could disable NTP for those two interfaces. Like so. And leave HTTPS and SSH enabled. Note also that, because we've left Telnet and HTTP disabled here, the only way to access management interfaces, either the web interface or via terminal software, is through a secure connection over HTTPS or SSH. We are essentially whitelisting traffic here. Your LAN time will block any traffic through its network ports unless it is explicitly allowed by a check mark in this table. This is important for security purposes. For more information about security guidelines in relation to your LAN time server, we certainly recommend studying the chapter Security User Guide Security Advisories of the LAN time OS manual, which is available from the Docs and Support tab here, or can be downloaded from the Mindberg website. Finally, you might have noticed this bar at the bottom here, Current State and this simply refers to the state of the system service running in the background. If you've configured all traffic for a service to be blocked, as with HTTP here, the system's HTTP service will be stopped, which is indicated by the red X here. If a service is permitted over any network interface, this will start the service and the status symbol should be a green check mark. Moving on to physical network configuration. 
For this section, it's important to know the difference between physical network interfaces and virtual network interfaces. Obviously, what we see here are the purely physical interfaces, that is, the actual physical ports that you can plug a network cable into. Under each interface, we see that each has a number of options, and we are going to look at these individually. The first option we see here is the Netlink mode, which is basically the mode of communication that this specific network port uses to communicate with the device that it is directly connected to, which we assume will be a switch or router. You should generally leave this on auto, which will attempt to establish the best possible link mode using auto negotiation. If there are problems with auto negotiating a connection, you can set a link mode manually. But it's important that your LAN time and the device it's connected to both use the same mode. The monitor interface option, which we see here as a simple checkbox, basically says whether the status of the physical network interface should be monitored by the system. If this is enabled, this will affect the status indicator at the top of the window, the network LED on the LAN time server itself, and status messages sent via other channels. You should always only activate monitoring for those ports that you are actually using to ensure that status reports and the status indicators actually provide relevant information about your network connections. The next option, bonding, is used to specify how each interface operates in isolation or in combination with other ports. Selecting single connection here means that the port will operate alone. Assigned to bond will make the port part of a network bonding group of which there can be up to five. While assigned to PRP will apply the parallel redundancy protocol or PRP of which there can also be five groups. We are not going to go into the intricacies of bonding and PRP here. You could write entire books on these subjects. But to keep it short, bonding is used as an example to provide port redundancy by connecting two or more network ports on your LAN time server to one or sometimes more network devices, so that if one fails, the other will step in. PRP, on the other hand, is used to connect your LAN time server to two or more networks primary and redundant networks, and the same data is sent over both networks so that, ideally, the LAN time will have at least two paths to every destination node, so that if one pass fails, the data sent over the other pass will still arrive. Recovery with bonding is quick, but not seamless, while the redundancy offered by PRP is seamless, but can be costly to implement. The bonding status shown behind the bonding mode indicates if a port is active or passive. The mode we generally recommend for bonding is active backup mode. We'll touch upon the other bonding mode a little later in the video. But for the purposes of active backup, what this status means is that the active port is the only port used for active communication in this bonding group, while the passive port is used as a redundant backup in case the active port fails. Next up is the IPv6 mode, which of course is only relevant if you are operating an IPv6 address network or connecting to IPv6 address devices in other networks. If you aren't, you can disable this, and if you are, you can enable it here, be it with manual or DHCP address assignment under activated, or you can enable stateless auto configuration here. Here's the MAC address, the physical identifier for the network port. The assigned virtual interfaces shows which virtual interfaces this physical interface is assigned to, with the numbered ID of each interface in a box. What we see here are the virtual interfaces that are automatically assigned to each individual physical interface. So physical interface 1 is linked with virtual interface 1 here. Lastly, we have the port power state, which indicates if each physical network port is receiving enough power to operate. Moving onward, this is the network interfaces submenu. While physical network configuration was all about the physical network interfaces, this section specifically addresses our virtual network interfaces. By default, you'll have one virtual network interface for each physical network interface taking LAN00, 
As an example here, LAN0 refers to the physical network interface and the second zero refers to the virtual interface to which it is assigned. Now, before we go through the specifics of virtual interfaces, let's first take a look at the tabs for each individual interface. First up is IPv4, which is everything related to the IPv4 addressing for that network interface. The first three fields, TCP IP address, NAT mask, and gateway are for configuring a static IP address and for setting up an interface-specific gateway. Interface-specific gateways are useful for examples for serving NTP clients and other subnets. A link to a Mindback Wiki article is provided below that explains the differences between default and interface-specific gateways in more detail. The checkbox Enable DHCP Client causes the LAN time server to request an IP address from the DHCP server, which is usually your router or switch, and all the information in the fields below IP address, net mask, broadcast address, gateway, DNSS servers, hostname, domain, is acquired from that DHCP server. If you happen to be configuring more than one physical interface, Please do be mindful of the fact that you must not have more than one interface on your LAN time with IPv4 addresses in the same address space, as this will cause issues with the LAN time's internal routing. Moving on to the IPv6 tab where you can enter a static IPv6 address here if you are using an IPv6 address network or you can pull an IPv6 address from a DHCPv6 server if you select Enable DHCP Client. Please do remember that you will need IPv6 mode to be enabled for that physical interface under Physical Interface Configuration if you are using this. The MISC tab contains various options that don't really belong elsewhere. The assigned interface is simply the physical interface that this virtual interface is assigned to. If we were to create a new virtual interface by clicking on the green Add Interface button at the top here, like so, we can open up the MISC tab of that new virtual interface here and select the physical interface that this virtual interface is assigned to. This way you can have several IP addresses pointing to a single physical interface. The red delete interface button here in turn does very much what you think it does and that's to delete this virtual interface. The MAC address is identical to the MAC address of the physical interface that we saw under physical network configuration. And finally, the label is simply a note for your own use. You can write whatever you like in here that might help your personal organization. The tab VLAN addresses virtual LANs, not to be confused with virtual interfaces, which can be used to assign tags to individual devices for the routers or switches VLAN functionality. Priority is used to prioritize your LAN times traffic within that VLAN. Finally, the cluster tab is a Mindback specific feature used to enable multiple LAN time devices to be accessed under a single IP address. For example, if you want to have multiple redundant LAN times accessible that are seamlessly switched in and out if one fails. To enable it, we enable the cluster option like this. Then we enter the IP address that all devices under the cluster should be accessible at. Make sure that this address is accessible by all the devices you wish to include. Enter your NAT mask. Again, make sure that this encompasses the addresses of all the devices you wish to be accessible under this address. Now, as you see, you can operate your cluster in unicast or in multicast mode. If you choose unicast mode, like this, you will see you can enter the IP addresses of the other members of the cluster manually and they'll negotiate with one another about which device should serve as the master of the group at any one time. Multicast mode uses a single multicast IP address and port. Here, which you'll have configured in your router or switch. 
Finally, you can configure the priority of this particular LAN time server in this cluster. If you wanted, you could have this server used only as a last resort backup, in which case you could set this to priority 1 and all other main masters to priority 0. But that said, we do recommend leaving the priority set to 0 for all of them so that our special NTP cluster algorithm can work his magic. If you wish to know more, there's a Mindback blog article on NTP clustering linked in the video description below. Let's go through the miscellaneous tab very quickly. We've just talked about the cluster multicast address and port. DSCP NTP classification for traffic management and network quality of service is located here. This is an advanced topic that won't be addressed here. And the bonding mode, which we see is set to active backup, determines how network bonding is handled. You can also select LACP, which uses both network interfaces at the same time to make better use of the greater bandwidth of two ports, as well as providing port redundancy. And last, but by no means least, we have the Extended Network Configuration tab. As you see, this is an editor where you can manually enter network commands, for example for static routing. This feature is strictly for advanced users only. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. It's a lot to take in, but we hope that it helped you to understand the basics of how networking works in LAN time servers. And of course, our technical support is always on hand to assist you with your specific problems. If you found this video helpful, we'd appreciate it if you click the thumbs up to let us know and remember to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss the latest videos with tips and tutorials for Mindback products. Thank you for watching. Mindberg, the synchronization experts.